In ancient African civilizations, the Aksumite Empire emerged as a vibrant thread, weaving through time and connecting the realms of trade, culture, and faith. Nestled in the northeastern corner of Africa, its roots traced back to the 4th century, blossoming into prominence by the 1st century. Aksum, synonymous with present-day Ethiopia, was more than a geopolitical entity. It embodied the convergence of commerce and spirituality. Legends whispered that the Ark of the Covenant found its sanctuary within the empire's borders, and the Queen of Sheba graced its courts. A beacon of trade, Aksum reached across the ancient world, leaving an indelible mark on the tapestry of human history. The Aksumite saga unfolded against the backdrop of northern Ethiopia and Eritrea, with the city of Aksum at its heart. An instrumental player in the maritime trade network between India and the Mediterranean, Aksum thrived on the exchange of goods like ivory, incense, gold, and exotic animals. The Periplus of the Erythrean Sea chronicled its significance, highlighting the ruler Zoskales, whose influence extended over crucial harbors on the Red Sea. As the currents of trade shifted in the first century, Aksum found itself perfectly positioned to capitalize on a transformed maritime route. The Red Sea, once a secondary conduit, became a focal point as ships sailed directly from Roman Egypt to southern India, buoyed by monsoon winds. Aksum, with its strategic location, ascended as the primary supplier of African treasures to the Roman Empire. The Aksumite kings, astute in their endeavors, forged an inland trading network to sustain the flow of coveted goods. This economic prowess extended beyond the borders of their empire, challenging the long-standing dominance of the Kingdom of Kush. By the first century, Aksum had eclipsed Kush, redirecting the ivory trade to its bustling port of Adulis. The zenith of Aksum's power was marked by territorial expansion, culminating in control over northern Ethiopia, Eritrea, Sudan, Egypt, Djibouti, Yemen, and southern Saudi Arabia. Minting its own currency and embracing Christianity in 325 or 328 under King Azana, Aksum stood as one of the great powers of its era. A quasi-ally of Byzantium, Aksum's fortunes began to wane in the 7th century, obscured by the shadows of uncertain reasons. Speculations point to the rise of Islam, disrupting its trade routes and isolating it from key markets. After a resplendent second golden age in the early 6th century, the empire embarked on a melancholic descent, ceasing coin production in the early 7th century. The Aksumite narrative reaches its enigmatic conclusion with the invasion of Queen Gudit in the 9th or 10th century, ushering in a dark age whose details remain elusive until the emergence of the Zagwa dynasty. The Aksumite Empire, once a radiant star in the African cosmos, left an enduring legacy in Ethiopian culture, shaping the roots of a civilization that would echo through the corridors of time. The origins of the Aksumite Empire, once shrouded in mystery, now emerge from the mists of time. While early theories suggested a Sabian migration across the Red Sea from South Arabia, contemporary scholars lean towards the notion of an indigenous genesis. The existence of the older Damat Kingdom, predating any Sabian influence, challenges the narrative of external origins. G. Easy, the ancient Semitic language of the region, is revealed to have ancient roots, predating the speculated Sabian migration. The empire's heartbeat was the city of Aksum, nestled in northern Ethiopia, a vibrant crossroads of culture and commerce. Amidst two hills and two streams, the city thrived as a cultural and economic nexus. Elaborate gravestones known as steel adorned the cemeteries along the hills and plains, a testament to the Aksumites' rich history. Other pivotal cities, including Yeha, Haoti, Matara, Adulis, and Kohito, further painted the portrait of Aksumite influence stretching into present-day Eritrea, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Djibouti, and Sudan. The societal fabric of Aksum was woven with diversity, encompassing Proto-Tigrayans, Proto-Amharas, Cushitic speakers, and Nilo-Saharan-speaking people like the Kanama and Nara, collectively known as Habishas. The empire's language, Giizi, persisted as the linguistic tapestry of the Ethiopian imperial court and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. In the corridors of power, Aksumite kings bore the august title of Ingius Ingiusti, King of Kings, echoing a lineage traced to the legendary union of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. This regal heritage became a timeless mantle, claimed by all emperors of Ethiopia, a symbol of continuity and divine connection. Within the empire's expansive territories, a modified feudal system took root, facilitating agricultural pursuits. Slavery was a reality, 
as Axumites cultivated the land and structured their society, the echoes of which would resonate through the corridors of time. As the Axumite Empire stood at the zenith of its power, its cultural, linguistic, and political legacy cast a profound and enduring shadow on the pages of history. Yet, as the Axumite narrative unfolds, mysteries linger, inviting us to delve deeper into the enigma of this ancient African civilization. In Aksum's history, threads of commerce and diplomatic relations weave a tale of a flourishing empire that stretched its influence across the ancient world. The Aksumite Empire, nestled in the northern realms of Ethiopia and Eritrea, stood as a beacon of trade, connecting distant lands through the Red Sea and the Upper Nile. Trade was the lifeblood of Aksum, pulsating with exchanges with India and Rome. The empire exported a bounty of riches, including ivory, tortoise shell, gold, and emeralds, while it eagerly welcomed the treasures of silk and spices from distant shores. With a robust navy navigating the Red Sea and the Upper Nile, Aksum's maritime prowess enabled profitable trade with African states like Nubia, Arabian realms, particularly Yemen, and the vibrant Indian subcontinent. In the third century, Aksum expanded its influence by acquiring tributary states on the Arabian Peninsula, fortifying its position across the Red Sea. By 350, the Aksumites achieved a significant triumph by conquering the Kingdom of Kush, solidifying their dominance in the region. As a testament to its economic might, Aksum boasted a diverse range of exports, reflecting the fertility of its lands during that era. Grains such as wheat and barley flourished, complemented by the husbandry of cattle, sheep, and camels. The pursuit of wild game, including hunting ivory and rhinoceros horns, added to the empire's wealth. The exchange with Roman, Egyptian, and Persian merchants facilitated a thriving economy, enriched further by the abundance of gold, iron, and the highly coveted salt, which was a prized commodity. Aksum's economic prowess endured until the advent of Islam in the 7th century. While the rise of Islam brought economic isolation to Aksum, a unique historical twist spared the empire from Muslim conquest. Having provided refuge to Muhammad's first followers, Aksum remained untouched by the spread of Islam across Africa. Although faced with challenges, the empire's resilience was evident when it repelled naval expeditions and later saw the recovery of territories in the 9th century. However, the tides of history eventually shifted. The Islamic Empire asserted control over the Red Sea and the Nile, ushering Aksum into a period of economic seclusion. By 710, what is now Eritrea fell under Islamic rule, marking a shift in regional dynamics. Aksum's once thriving naval power waned, but echoes of its influence lingered, reflecting a bygone era of prosperity and diplomacy. As the Islamic Empire shaped the geopolitical landscape, Aksum found itself relegated to a position of historical significance. The Aksumite Empire unfurled a tapestry of cultural brilliance, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of history. Amidst the ancient lands of Aksum, achievements flourished, creating a rich mosaic that resonates through the ages. One of the empire's most enduring legacies was the Jiz alphabet, a script that evolved from epigraphic South Arabian during the pre-Aksumite period. This unique alphabet, later modified to include vowels, became an abagida, a writing system where consonants carry an inherent vowel. This linguistic innovation symbolized the intellectual prowess of Aksum, a beacon of knowledge in an era when written language was a potent force. Around 1,700 years ago, the Aksumites erected colossal obelisks as markers for the resting places of emperors and nobles. Among these, the famed obelisk of Aksum stood tall, a testament to the craftsmanship and architectural finesse of the empire. These monoliths, rising to the sky, whispered stories of a bygone era, each groove and inscription narrating the tales of rulers and the nobility. Under the visionary rule of Emperor Azana, Aksum underwent a profound transformation. Around 325, Aksum embraced Christianity, discarding its polytheistic and Judaic traditions. This pivotal moment birthed the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church and the Eritrean Orthodox Twato Church institutions that endure to this day. The Jizi language, intertwined with the essence of Aksum spirituality, became the vessel for sacred scriptures and liturgy, echoing in the hallowed halls of churches. Aksum's cultural landscape reflected a vibrant cosmopolitanism, a convergence of Egyptian, Sudanic, Arabic, and Indian influences. Within the bustling cities of Aksum, diversity thrived with Sabaean, Jewish, Nubian, Christian, and even Buddhist communities coexisting.
It was a testament to the empire's openness and the rich interplay of cultures that shaped its identity. In the realm of currency, Aksum pioneered as the first African polity to mint its own coins. From the reign of Indubis to Armagh, spanning approximately 270 to 610, Aksum issued gold, silver, and bronze coins. These tangible symbols of economic prowess bore witness to the empire's parity with neighboring civilizations. Not only did they facilitate trade, but the coins also served as propaganda tools, proclaiming Aksum's achievements and transformations, such as the incorporation of the cross after the conversion to Christianity. Within the sacred confines of the Church of Mary of Zion, nestled in Aksum, rested the enigmatic Ark of the Covenant. Legend held that this revered relic, brought by King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba's son, found sanctuary in Aksum. Guarded zealously by priests, the Ark became a mystical centerpiece, shrouded in secrecy and sacred traditions. Yet, despite its cultural zenith, Aksum faced the inexorable tide of change. The towering stele, iconic symbols of Aksumite legacy, began to crumble as the 7th century unfolded. The empire experienced a decline, with theories pointing to climatic shifts, trade isolation, and over-farming as contributing factors. The once thriving heartland shifted inland, and the population faced challenges that eventually led to Aksum's defeat around 950. As shadows draped the remnants of Aksum's glory, the empire yielded to historical evolution. A queen, whether the enigmatic Jewish queen Yodit, Judith, or another figure, left her mark, burning churches and literature, but the veracity of her existence remains debated. Scientific explanations, less romantic but perhaps more pragmatic, cite climate change and trade isolation as silent architects of Aksum's decline. Aksum, once a cultural and economic powerhouse, stepped into the wings of history, yielding its narrative to successors. The Zagwa dynasty ascended, bearing witness to the ebb and flow of civilizations. The legacy of Aksum, engraved in stone, scripture, and cultural nuances, became a chapter in the grand epic of human history, a testament to the impermanence of empires and the enduring spirit of cultural brilliance.